In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to show you some techniques for creating a logo, a brand, or just another object that you can use either by itself or in PowerDirector. So we have our opening splash screen. We're going to click on the edit box in the lower left corner. That opens up the screen that you have here. And I'll click to start a new layer. It wants to know if I want a new empty project. Let's do that. And now I need to determine about how large I want it to be. Normally logos aren't that big. So let's make it a width of maybe 600 and a height of 400. We can always crop it later. We want to make sure our background is transparent because I'm going to create a PNG. And name, I'll just call this test. And we'll click on OK. So now I have a new project with a transparent background. First thing I want to do is add another layer. So I'll click on the plus and we'll add an empty layer. On this layer, we're going to create an image. I'm going to click on the icon of the shape of the image. We can select an ellipse, rectangle, polygon, or star. Let's do an ellipse. And we'll create something maybe about like this. I'll need to move it to center it. Now I want to do some things with the color of the ellipse. I can select any color I want to from the color palette. Let's move to something a little lighter and brighter, something like this. And then we'll click on OK. Now we're going to do some adjustments to our ellipse, which is our background. So I'm going to click on the effects, the FX on layer number one, which is my ellipse. Here I can do several things. I could do a bevel and emboss if I want it three-dimensional, and I can make that very fine or very sharp. And I don't think I want a border, but if you do, you click over here. Let's do go down to the color gradient and do a color gradient on this. Let's pick a couple of blues here. I'm going to click on this one. Now we can add color stops by clicking below the line or clicking on the plus. And let's add a white stop. And we can adjust this as many times as we want. Now we'll click here. We'll add another one, another white stop. Click on OK. So I can widen this band. And by using these diamonds, I can affect whether it's sharp or rather smooth transition between them. Now we're going to move the white a little bit down. So now I have a rather unique beginning of my image. I'm going to click on OK. And now we're going to add some text to it. So all I need to do is click on the text tool. It will create a new layer when I'm here. You notice it just calls it layer 2. And let's call this uh, A, B, C printing. And we'll have to enlarge it so it goes the other direction. And move it. When we move it, we're going to see some guides for the center of the object. We can change the font size, the font style. Let's try something else. Let's try this one here. And we can change the size. Again, remember, you don't have to stick with the limits you have here. You can actually customize by typing over the number. Let's do a 27 pixels. And let's see, what would that look like if it were bold? No, it is bold. I'll leave it that way. And again, we can move it where we want. You notice if I start another text here, it's going to create another layer called layer two, your hometown solution. And we'll take this and we'll move it so we can change the width of it and put it in the bottom. Let's change the font, something like this, and we'll change the size. And what we can even do once we get it about where we want, let's take this and let's change the color. I'll do a control A. We'll turn it to something maybe in the yellow, bright yellow. That would be good. And we'll give it a bit of a, let's give it a shadow. And make the shadow solid black. Click on OK. 
How does that look? Not too bad. Now I'm going to take my text effects and click back here. And since it's at the bottom part, I think I want it to look a little bit like this one here. Now it's a little bigger than what I want now that it's stretched out. So I'm going to have to go back to the normal text to edit it. We'll change the size. Let's try 18. And then we'll turn the effects back on that I want. So we're going to take this and let's see what happens if we make it narrower. And then let's do another text. Click off of there, click on text again. You notice it will create yet another layer. We'll give a phone number. You notice it inherits the text properties of the previous area. We'll put it right here. Now we'll change the font color. Let's make this black. And we'll turn off the shadow. Let's make it a little larger. Okay, now we have it. The next thing I would do in this case would be I would take this and crop it a little bit. So we'll turn on our crop tool. I can leave the aspect ratio if I want. And make sure I get the shadow in here. Something like that. Now I can save the project as it is so I can edit any part of it later if I so desire. To do that I would say File and I would click on Save as Photo Director Layer. That would be give me a layered project that I could edit. So let's do that. Let's go here and we'll save it. We'll just call it Test. But if I want to export it I'll go File, Save As. Now my options, if I click on the drop down, are PNG, JPG, and TIFF. I want a PNG, we'll just call it Test PNG, and then I'll click on Save. So now I can go back and re-edit it because it's a saved program. I also saved a copy outside of that as a simple PNG. Let's minimize this. When I return to my file system, I see I have my Test PNG. I can click on it here. and it opens it up and this is my image. So I can use this as a standalone or I can use this in a video production, anything I want. But that's a, some of the simple techniques you can keep in mind when you're trying to create something special in CyberLink PhotoDirector 365.